to make the right choices I'm a promise to be Anything he wants me to be Mind if we all sing? That'd be great! I am a promise I am a possibility I am a promise With a capital P I am a great big bundle of potentiality I would like to introduce you to someone who is very, very special to me, and I love him very much. And someday he's going to make Black history. My name is Sister Michelle Washington, and Sister Lacey Gaynor, Gaynor and I are co-directors of the Children's Church Ministry at the Sanctuary Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Sister Lacey spoke with you all last week about the video named My Friend Martin. Sitting here with me today, scoot on over here, son. Is my son Malachi Washington. Malachi has decided that he's going to be a fashion designer. I wanted to interview him to get some of his motivational thoughts and to ask him a couple of questions. Malachi. Can you tell me about why you want to be a fashion designer? Um, I want to be a fashion designer because there's a lot of people I look up to. Um, some people believe in God, and it kind of helps me to do something and to show that you can do anything if you put your mind to it and if you believe in yourself and believe in God. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, what's the Bible story that you've read that motivates you the most? Um, David and Goliath. Oh, that's a good story. Why that one, son? Because um, David was the smaller person, and he wasn't expected to win the fight or battle that they had against each other. And Goliath was the big person and, like, the bully, sort of, kind of. So they were expecting him to win when he did it. And... David, like, believed in himself and wasn't scared to do what he was supposed to do. So that, like, motivates me to, like, do what I like to do. I love that. That's a great answer. And just so you guys know, that story is found in the book of uh, 1 Samuel. And I believe it's even chapter 17. So you guys and gals should take some time to look that story up because that is one of the, one of the great ones and one of my favorites. You know, also one of the things that I did pull from that story, Malachi, that I think is so important, it's Philippians 4.13, and that is, through Christ, you have strength, and you can do anything. That's awesome. That's Philippians 4.13. And I like that because you're taking the power that David knew that he had because he knew who his father was. So he knew he could beat that giant, and you have the awareness also that you know where your strength comes from. That's really important, Malachi. 
I'm going to show you all a video of several people. They knew that they could do anything. And those people made what we call Black History. Let's watch this video and then we'll come back together when the video ends. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Hale Williams performed the first ever heart surgery in 1893 without the assistance of x-rays, antibiotics, or modern anesthesia. Dr. Dan, as he was known, was born in Pennsylvania and received his medical degree from Chicago Medical School. In 1891, he founded Provident Hospital, the first interracial hospital in Chicago on the city's south side. The hospital established the first black nursing school. One fateful day, two years later, a young black man named James Cornish was brought to Provident Hospital with a serious wound on his chest. With his patient bleeding heavily, Williams saw only one option. He performed surgery on James' chest, fixing the severed artery, and then closed the wound. James was discharged 51 days later, fully recovered. He lived another 20 years, proving the success of Dr. Dan's operation. George Washington Carver was a botanist, agricultural chemist, and inventor. His innovation and determination helped to restore the struggling agricultural economy of the South during the early 20th century. Fascinated with nature from an early age, he grew a secret flower garden in the woods near his foster home. He earned the nickname, The Plant Doctor, by the time he was 10 years old because of his skill in caring for sick plants. At 27, Carver entered Iowa State College of Agriculture and graduated as one of their outstanding scholars. He was appointed their greenhouse director and an assistant instructor in botany. He earned his master's degree in 1896, and out of his long-held desire to help poor Black Southerners, he accepted Booker T. Washington's offer to be the Director of Agriculture at Tuskegee Institute. Southern cotton farmers were bringing in smaller harvests and thus less money. Carver examined the soil and found the cotton plants had taken important nutrients from the soil. He discovered that peanuts, sweet potatoes, soybeans, and cowpeas returned nitrogen to the soil, so he urged farmers to plant these in rotation with cotton. The crops helped feed the farmers' families and allowed them to grow more cotton than before. When the farmers struggled to find customers for their peanut and sweet potato crops, Carver made more than 300 products from peanuts, such as ink, shampoo, soap, and candy, and molasses, glue, and flour from sweet potatoes. Carver donated his life savings to Tuskegee to establish the George Washington Carver Foundation which helped provide research opportunities for students. A museum was also founded in his honor. President Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered the dedication of the George Washington Carver National Monument located near the scientist's childhood home in Missouri. It was the first national monument dedicated to an African-American. George Washington Carver believed it is simply service that measures success. Madam C.J. Walker was the first African-American millionaire businesswoman in the United States. Born Sarah Breedlove in Louisiana, she was orphaned at age six. At age 20, she became a widow with a two-year-old daughter to support. She worked as a washerwoman in St. Louis, Missouri, a job which required difficult manual labor with little pay. Still, she attended night school and saved what money she could to invest in her experiments. Sarah suffered from alopecia, a condition which left her hair dry and brittle, sometimes patches fell out. Dissatisfied with the hair treatments available at the time, she mixed different combinations of oils in her bathtub until she discovered a satisfactory formula. The treatment worked for her and she then began testing her wonderful hair grower on other people. It was a hit, and after moving to Denver, Colorado, she perfected her treatment and created other products, including a straightening comb, which she patented in 1905. 
Sarah sold products door to door and used her own before and after photos as proof of her product's effectiveness. Sarah married Charles Joseph Walker in 1906 and began calling herself Madam C.J. Walker. Her Walker method took off, allowing her to establish an office and manufacturing headquarters after only one year. With the help of her daughter and nieces, Walker recruited more saleswomen to help sell her products. In 1908, Walker opened a second office in Philadelphia, as well as a beauty parlor and school in Pittsburgh. Her hair courses eventually became available in New York, Indianapolis, and at black colleges throughout the South. In 1917, Walker built a 30-room mansion in New York and began to sponsor black artists and writers, even establishing the Madam Walker Theater Center in Indianapolis. By that time, her manufacturing company took up an entire city block and employed over 3,000 people. Madam C.J. Walker also donated generously to scholarship funds at Tuskegee and Palmer Memorial Institutes and organizations such as the YMCA and the NAACP. Garrett A. Morgan was an African-American inventor born in 1875 in Kentucky. One night, a Cleveland Waterworks construction crew became trapped underground in a cloud of toxic fumes when their tunnel beneath Lake Erie exploded. First responders made two unsuccessful attempts to rescue the workers. With time running out, the authorities summoned Garrett and his brother Frank. They arrived with a gas mask Morgan had patented two years before. Earlier breathing devices were unreliable, so Morgan invented something better. Firefighters, engineers, chemists, and other workers who regularly encountered dangerous gases were already using his breathing device in other cities. He later upgraded his mask with its own air supply, and it became of great importance during World War I and later wars. At the Cleveland disaster site, the Morgan brothers and two volunteers strapped on the gas mask and made several brave trips through the darkness of the 200-foot-long toxic tunnel. They rescued more than 20 people. Morgan was awarded a medal from the International Association of Fire Engineers. The gas mask was not his first or last invention. Morgan worked as a handyman at a sewing machine shop in Ohio and at age 26 sold his belt fastener for sewing machines. Eight years later, he opened a tailoring shop which manufactured dresses and suits. After only one year, Morgan and his wife purchased a home where they eventually raised three sons. After accidentally discovering a hair straightening substance in 1913, Morgan established the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. The profit supported his continued research. In 1923, Morgan patented an automatic traffic signal which led to the overhead and sidewalk traffic lights that keep us safe to this day. I always knew I'd go to space, Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman astronaut, once said. Jemison, born in 1956, is also a physician, teacher, and the founder and president of two technology companies, the Jemison Group, and an advanced medical device company, Biosentient Corporation. Born in Alabama and raised in Chicago, Jemison was fascinated with science from an early age. Her father and mother were very encouraging. She said, My parents were the best scientists I knew because they were always asking questions. Jemison entered Stanford University on scholarship when she was only 16 years old. She graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts in African and African American Studies. In 1981, she received her doctorate from Cornell University Medical College. Jemison practiced medicine in Los Angeles, California, before serving in the Peace Corps as a medical officer in Sierra Leone and Liberia for two years. In addition to speaking English, Jemison speaks Swahili, Russian, and Japanese. Inspired by the life of Sally Ride, the first woman in space, Jemison applied to NASA and in 1987, she became one of only 15 people chosen out of 2,000 candidates for their astronaut corps. Jemison's first and only spaceflight began on September 12, 1992, 
when the space shuttle Endeavour took off for its second mission. Jemison served as a science mission specialist on the eight-day mission, which was a joint effort between the United States and Japan. Jemison resigned from NASA in March of 1993 to form the Jemison Group Incorporated, which highlights ways to bring science and technology to everyday life. The following year, she founded the Dorothy Jemison Foundation for Excellence, named in honor of her mother, which includes an international space camp for high school students called the Earth We Share. In 2011, the U.S. military chose this foundation to receive $500,000 in funding to help launch the 100-year Starship project. Our task, our mission, Jemison explained, is to make sure all the capabilities needed to mount a human interstellar mission exist. Jemison envisions public participation from everyone, regardless of who they are or where they come from. Someday, perhaps, more people will be able to confidently declare, I always knew I'd go to space. Well, welcome back. Weren't those stories awesome? Hey, did you know any, about any of that black history? I have to admit, some of it I didn't even know either. We're just not taught that in school. So it's really important that we're having this conversation right now. And also, I want you to know that these stories are all so easy to find. To find. I found them on YouTube. So, whose story did you like best? You know what? I'm a nurse, so I love Dr. Daniel Hale Williams' story about opening the first interracial hospital in Chicago. Interracial means that it was okay for black and white people to go there and get treated if they needed to be seen at the hospital. But if you want to be an astronaut, a successful businessman, or a businesswoman, or you love science, you may have liked Mae Jemison's story. Uh, about going to space or George Washington Carver's story. Who knew that peanuts were so important? And of course, Madam C.J. Walker, who at one point um, lived here in Indianapolis. Uh, do you think that those people endured a lot? Mm -hmm. I bet they did. Uh, Sister Lacey Gaynor talked about this a lot last week with the Martin Luther King story. I'm sure they endured a lot, especially since most of these um, black history makers did all this before Martin and the Civil Rights Movement ever even started. Last week, Sister Lacey also talked about Genesis 127. You remember that? You are created in God's image. You are are important. You are loved. You matter and you are favored. Look at what you can accomplish no matter what because Philippians 4:13 says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, Malachi, last week Sister Lacey talked about Matthew 28:19 and that was going out and making disciples. How do you think you'll be able to do that in your future work? Mm -hmm. In my future work, I think I'll be able to make disciples by inspiring people and telling them my story and how I'm motivated to do what I do. And um, that will also make them believe in Christ and believe that you can do anything you want to. Wow. Well, you know, a real important question is how are you doing it now? Um, I help with the kids at Children's Church, and I'm also helping with the marriage retreat that's coming up. So, yeah, that's how I help people and help them become disciples. That's awesome. Thank you, Malachi, for letting me interview you. I love you very much. And thank you, young people, for being such good listeners. Goodbye for now. <laughs>